Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new webinar of ITTIA Country Focus. The webinar will shed light on a new country of promising economic future, the Republic of Azerbaijan. As the voice of the private sector in the Islamic world, the Islamic Chamber of Commerce, Industry, and Agriculture launched the Country Focus Webinars platform. In light of its devoted efforts to develop trade exchange, enhance investment capabilities, and also achieve economic integration in all its member countries. So today's webinar will focus on the Republic of Azerbaijan, a country that over the years has proven the remarkable potentials of its economic and developmental future as one of the rapidly growing economies in the Islamic world. And today we will explore its promising sectors and strength uh, areas. So the webinar will be in partnership with the National Confederation of Entrepreneurs Organizations of the Republic of Azerbaijan. And it's a great honor to have with us today, Mr. Bugar Dinalov, Vice President of ASK. Thank you so much for having the time to be with us. Uh, in the beginning, I would like to welcome and introduce our esteemed speakers, Mr. Ilshan Rahman, the legal manager of the Alat Free Economic Zone Authority, on behalf of Mr. Bali Alat Garouf, the chairman of the foundation, uh, Mr. Zuhrab Gadirov, advisor to the director of the Export and Investment Promotion Agency of Azerbaijan, Mr. Zuhrab Gadirov, Sorry, Mr. Dawur Gardashov, advisor to the chairman of the Small and Medium Enterprise Development Agency of Azerbaijan, and Mr. Farid Amirov, head of the uh, Project and Programs Department of the Agency for Agrocredit and Development under the Ministry of Agriculture in Azerbaijan. Welcome, everyone, and thank you so much for having the time uh, to be with us today. Um, let's start the webinar first with the welcoming remarks of Mr. Bugar Dinalo, Vice President of ASK. Uh, Mr. Bugar, the floor is all yours. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, ilk sizleri, Azerbaijan Tarikyalar Konfederasyonu Prezidenti Mehmet Musayev'in adından uh, salamlayıram bu uh, görüşte. Ee, öncelikle kısa şekilde ASIK hakkında demek isteyeyim. Ee, ASIK Azerbaycan Resulü ve Sahipkarlar ve işe götürenlerin en iri təşkilatı olarak biz e, konfederasiya sahipkarlık fəaliyyatıyla məşğul olan hüququ ve fizik şəxslərinin fəaliyyatını əlaqələndirən, onların hüququ ve mənafilərini e, müxtəlif instansiyalarda müdafiə edən biznesi dəstək təşkilatıdır. Hazırda ASIK'ın 6000'dən çox Sahipkarlı subyekti, o, o cümleden 120, e, 120'ye kadar asistasiya ve ittifakları özünde birleştirir. First of all, I would like to agree with you on the behalf of the President of the National Confederation of Entrepreneurs, Organizations of the Republic of Azerbaijan, Mr. Mehmet Musayev. First, I would like to briefly state that ISK is the largest organization of entrepreneurs and employers in the Republic of Azerbaijan. Uh, it's a business support organization that coordinates the activities of legal and natural interests engaged in the entrepreneurial activity, as well as it defends their rights and insurance in the various instances. Bunu yanaşı gelirme istiyorum ki Azerbaycan Sahipkarlar Konfederasyonu, Almanya, Türkiye, Rusya, Çin, Fransa ve İtalya'da kimi ülkelerde, yani 25'ten çok harici ülkelerde resmi numaralar. In addition, the official representative office of ASK operates in more than 25 foreign countries, including Germany, Turkey, Russia, China, France, Italy, and the other ones. Bildirme istedim ki, ASK 2015-ci ildən İslam Ticaret Palatasının üzvüdür və Azərbaycan sahibkarlarını İslam Ticaret Palatasında təmsil edən təşkil. I also would like to inform you that ASK is the only organization that represents entrepreneurs of our country in ICCIA, and it has been a fully authorized member of the institution since 2015. Since then, very productive activities have been carried out between ICC and ASK. 
Konfederasiyanın prezidenti Cənab Məhməd Musayev iki direktorlar şurasına, İcraya Komitəsinə və eyni zamanda Mənzil Qərargahı İstanbul şəhərində yerləşən İslam Əməkdaşlıq Təşkilatı Arbitraj Məhkəməsinin Qəyyumlar Şurasına üz seçilir. Past AEC President Mr. Mehmet Musayev was elected as a member of the Board of Directors, Executive Committee of ICCIA, and at the same time the Board of Trustees of the Arbitration Center of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, headquartered in Istanbul. Bununla yanaşı bizim kifayet kadar aktiv emektaşlığımız olub. Onlardan biri de 3-4 oktyabr 2019-cu il tarixində ASK və İslam Ticari Palatası İslam Əməkdaşlıq Təşkilatına üzv olan MDB ölkələri ilə Strateji Məhsul Seminarı uğurda təşkil olunmuşdur. Besides, as an important part of our cooperation on October 3-4-2019, ASK and ICCIA successfully organized a strategic product seminar for some CIS countries out of members of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. Və sözsüz ki, bizim qarşıda ən böyük tədbirlərdən biri olan, yəni 26-27 oktyabrda, Biz, demək, Bakı şəhərində dayanıqlı kənd təsarifatı forumu keçirməsini planlaşdırırıq və bunu İslam Ticarət Sənayi Palatası ilə, bizim konfederasiya ilə və kiçik və orta biznesin inkişafı agenti ilə birlikdə eləmək fikirdir. Also, as a continuation of our successful cooperation on October 26-27 of the current year, With the joint organization of the Islamic Chamber of Commerce, Industry and Agriculture, the National Confederation of Entrepreneurs, Organizations of the Republic of Azerbaijan, and the Small and Medium Business Development Agency of the Republic of Azerbaijan, there is planned to be held the Sustainable Agricultural Forum in Baku. Buna yanaşı, bu son Oman Sultanı Maskat şəhərində keçirilən son direktorlar şurasının, yəni o 8-ci iclasında, Qərar qəbul edilmişdi ki, həm direktorlar şurasının 34-cü iclası da həmin forum ərəfəsində Azərbaycanda keçirilsin. In addition, during the 38th meeting of the ICCA General Assembly and the 33rd meeting of the Board of Directors in Moscow, it was agreed to hold the next 34th meeting of the ICCA Board of Directors in Azərbaycan. Əminəm ki, bu tədbir İslam ölkələr arasında sahibkarların inteqrasiyasına çox böyük törfə verəcək. We think that holding such prestigious events in our country will play an important role in the integration of the private sector in the Islamic world. Hörmətli webinar iştirakçıları, demək ki, İslam Ticarət Polasası Counter Focus Virtual Platforması və təşkilata üzv olan 57 ölkənin təmsilçilərinə ölkəmizdə mövcud olan investisiya mühiti və imkanları haqqında ətraflı məlumatın çatdırılmasında bu webinar çox əhəmiyyətli bir vasitə olacaq. Dear participants of the event, we are sure that the virtual platform ICCA Country Focus will be an important tool in providing detailed information about the investment environment and opportunities available in our country to the representatives of 57 member countries of the organization. Çıxışımın sonunda sadəcə olaraq həm İslam Ticarət Palatasına, həm kiti və orta biznesin inkişafı agentliyinə, həm eyni zamanda ixracın və investisiyaların təşviqi agentliyinə və ələt azad iqtisadi zonasına bizə və Agrar Kredit və İnkişaf Təşkilatına minnətdarlığımı bildirirəm ki, bu webinarda bizə dəstək olurlar. In this regard, I would like to thank our partners, the Islamic Chamber of Commerce, Industry and Agriculture, the Alad Azad Economic Zone, the Small and Medium Business Development Agency of the Republic of Azerbaijan, the Export and Investment Promotion Agency of the Republic of Azerbaijan, and the Agrarian Credit and Development Agency, who supported us. Tüm tədbir iştirakçılarına uğurlar arzu verəm. Təşəkkür edirəm. In this regard, I wish success to the participants of the event. Thank you for attention. Thank you so much for such an inspiring speech uh, to start the webinar with. And sure, thank you for participating in today's webinar.
Um, let's move now to one of the most important organizations that plays a central role in transforming the vision of Azerbaijan as a diversified, expert-oriented and knowledge economy hub into reality. The Alat Free Economic Zone Authority, glad to have with us Mr. Ilshan Rahman, the legal manager to tell us more about its role in encouraging investments in Azerbaijan. <clears throat> Thanks a lot for such a welcome and such a description. Um, okay, uh, dear all participants and guests, uh, I would, would like to inform uh, all the members of the Islamic Chamber of Commerce, Industry and Agriculture and all participants of this meeting about a electric economic zone established by a presidential uh, decree dated May 2020 and about the unique uh, opportunities that are provided by a FESA authority to businesses engaged in high value added, export oriented manufacturing and international traded services. Why we are so confident in attractiveness of our project? Um, first reason for this is the establishment of successful development of AFES as an important part of the general policy of the president and the government of the Republic of Azerbaijan to develop a knowledge-based and internationally competitive uh, economy, which will allow Azerbaijan to become a highly competitive participant in international economic relations with diversified and export-oriented economy, creating high added value based on a world-class attractive business environment with modern energy, transportation, and logistical infrastructure. The second reason uh, is the unique legal basis for that. And this is my favorite, by the way. Uh, the legislation of the AFES consists of the law of the Republic of Azerbaijan on the electric economic zone adopted by the parliament of Azerbaijan and signed by the president of Azerbaijan as prevailing law of Azerbaijan and internal regulations of AFES adopted and signed by the AFES authority. And the law of the Republic of Azerbaijan on the electric economic zone declares the affairs legislation take precedence over the base economy legislation. It means that not only law on affairs, but even our internal regulations adopted by affairs authority taking precedence over the base economy legislation. To clearly demonstrate precedence of affairs legislation over the base economy legislation, and exclude any possibility of any conflicts in the interpretation of provisions of affairs legislation and the base economy legislation, the relevant amendments were made in more than 85 base economy laws, including constitutional law on normative legal acts, and this process is still continuing. In particular, uh, relevant amendments were made and adopted by our parliament and signed by the president in tax customs, licensing, labor, dispute resolution, and other more than 85, as I said before, and other laws of the Republic of Azerbaijan. And these amendments clearly acknowledge that a left economic zone legislation takes precedence over those laws. In addition to that, a first law clearly declares that the base economy authorities shall not have any jurisdiction in affairs and shall not have any power to regulate or oversee the activities of affairs authority or affairs legal entities. Uh, it means businesses established by investors in affairs. In short, the legislation of base economy of Azerbaijan is not valid in affairs and for subjects of the affairs. Uh, a list of these internal regulations is presented on the slide, slide shown on the screen, as, as you can see. I can mention from them the company regulations, licensing regulations, real property regulations, customs regulations, migration regulations, insolvency regulations, company administration regulations, and uh, tax regulations, employment regulations, and so on. In addition to that, we will provide to our investors and to businesses established by them in affairs a package of fiscal and non fiscal incentives, including exemption from value added tax, uh, withholding tax, and in other corporate tax, exemption from customs duties and taxes on import to the free zone and export from the free zone, no personal income tax for local personnel if the monthly salary does not exceed 8,000 8, manats, 
which is approximately 4,700 US dollars. No social security payments and no other similar taxes and payments for foreign skilled personnel. No restriction on foreign ownership. No requirement for a local partner. No restrictions on currency transactions and profit repatriation. Uh, besides that, investor property is immune from any nationalization, expropriation measures, or any other restrictions on private ownership. Full protection of intellectual property rights. Assistance in finding local skilled personnel. On-site, one-stop shop business appraisal, licensing, permits, and etc. Independent regulatory body and other incentives. And all these incentives will also be available to support the subsequent expansion and growth of our clients' businesses into the future. In addition to business-friendly legislation, fiscal and non-fiscal incentives, we will provide to our clients industrial land plots with ready-to-use off-site and on-site infrastructure and utilities. Based on approved by Affairs Authority Master Plan, Affairs initially will occupy a total site area of approximately 850 hectares located next to the seaport of Baku and global transport corridors. Moreover, the government reserved more than 7,000 hectares for future expansion of Affairs. I am sure that it will be very attractive for our potential clients that in accordance with the law of the Republic of Azerbaijan on the Alatri Economic Zone, the government granted the free zone authority and irrevocable, uh, unfettered and perpetual right of use of over free zone land and only free zone authority is entitled to use, lease or otherwise dispose the free zone land. The development strategy being implemented by the Affairs Authority is to build out affairs infrastructure and facilities in phases, in several phases. The first phase of the development of off-site infrastructure and utilities finished in March 2021. And in April 2021, we started the development of infrastructure and utilities of initial 60 hectare area. And in July 2021, we started construction of affairs business center and affairs customs plaza. The physical development program is on schedule, and we are planning to finish the development of on-site infrastructure of phase one and open it for businesses in October 2022. When completed, uh, the first phase of infrastructure development will include 60 hectares territory with ready to use off-site and on-site infrastructure and utilities, the customs plaza and main entrance to affairs, and of course, the affairs authority building. And after the completion of construction works on phase one, 60 hectares area, we plan to start construction works on 84 hectare of phase two development area. But due to a high number of committed investors in our project, we are ready to invest their funds and start building their enterprises on the territory of affairs. We had to increase phase two development area from 84 hectares to 138 hectares and start construction works on these 138 hectares area immediately at the end of this year to be ready to provide our investors additional industrial land plots not later than in the end of the next year. And for the same reason, we are forced to start detailed design of the territory of phase three designated for heavy industry. This year, so that we can provide investors industrial land plots was ready to use off-site and on-site infrastructure and utilities not later than in year 2024. Despite the problems arising from COVID-19 restrictions, we established very productive contacts with potential investors from different countries, and the list of potential investors is expanding every week. I'm absolutely sure that a first project will be successful only if our clients will be convinced that we are doing everything necessary to ensure their successful and profitable activities in a first. Finally, we have two goals and both of them are very crucial for us. First, we will create the best possible business environment for affairs clients so that they have all they need to successfully establish and develop their businesses in affairs. And at the same time, we will support expansion and growth of businesses of our clients into the future. Secondly, we want to demonstrate to the people of Azerbaijan that the transition to an internationally competitive and knowledge-based economy means in practice to 
to support and assist our entrepreneurs, our businesses, business entities to learn and practice a new business culture, new technologies to generate innovative enterprises to create a real value for the economy and the people of Azerbaijan. And of course, business enterprises from all Islamic countries and all around the world are welcomed in al the Economic Zone. For those from participants, I mean, for those who are interested in getting additional information about al the Economic Zone, please feel free to get in touch with us via provided contact information. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much for a great and very informative presentation, Mr. Ilshan, many thanks for you. Um, okay. Moving now to Mr. Zuhrab Gadirov, advisor to the director of the Expert and Investment Promotion Agency of Azerbaijan, which is a foundation under the Ministry of Economy with a very long and very successful uh, history in attracting foreign investments in the non-oil sector and also creating uh, a comprehensive investment climate in Azerbaijan. Uh, Mr. Zuhrab would love to hear from you about the agency and its current projects. Thank you very much. I, I hope I can be heard well and allow me to put yes. up the screen. Um, let me know if it can be seen. Should yes, be seen right now. That's excellent. Thank you. Well, um, thank you for your kind introduction. Uh, I think it would be very useful to provide some uh, basic information about the country, some general information and general overview of the country. Uh, as of the year end uh, 2021, the country's GDP equal to 54 billion, which compounded for per capita uh, and the population is 10 million is around $5.5 thousand dollars. So uh, on this very slide, uh, what is very important for us is to show how the diversification of the economy away from oil and gas is important and you can see that throughout the years uh, the number uh, the, the the percentage uh, has been increasing in favor of uh, oil and gas economy. some of the years that the, it, it could be fluctuating but that's mainly uh, due to the price of oil other than that there is a steady the growth of the non-oil sector which is very important to us here on this slide you can see that uh, apart from the fact that Azerbaijan is a proven trading partner, it is also important to mention that our uh, export is almost as twice uh, big as our import is. So that's very important. But again, here on this slide, I'd like to draw your attention to the left bottom part of this slide where it mentions the uh, non-oil and gas, goods and commodities exported out of the country. This is what is truly important to us as an agency in charge of Expert and investment promotion. So, um, for those of you um, who is not really familiar with the region, uh, I must say that Azerbaijan is located in a very, very strategic geographic location, being on the crossroads of east and west of uh, um, uh, south and uh, north. So that's important to mention. Actually, these two points are intersecting here in Azerbaijan. Now. Uh, also, uh, given the recent developments, I think the map that you see on the right part that is showing three ways from um, east to west is also very interesting, given the fact that the, um, the middle corridor is uh, getting more attention and is uh, acquiring more and more attention, which we continue to uh, witness. Well, it's one thing to be geographically well located, but it's completely different thing whether you or not you have a proper well uh, built infrastructure in the place. And in our case, we can definitely say, yes, we do have a proper and strong infrastructure. As you can see that in the recent years, we've had around 20,000 uh, kilometers of roads and highways rehabilitated, built from and built from scratch, basically. So that's a very important development. Uh, in the country, we have, by now, it's actually AIDS. The AIDS airport is uh, launched in Azerbaijan, also uh, in the liberated uh, areas, just like the one prior to that. So now we have two uh, airports in the liberated areas of uh, Azerbaijan, overall the number is eight. And I think uh, uh, recently, uh, shortly, we will witness the launching of another uh, airport, which will be number nine, also in the liberated areas. So that's important to mention. 
Uh, when it comes to railroad, um, there is an important infrastructure project coming to Azerbaijan by means of Georgia to Turkey. And from there, this route, of course, is extended to Europe. So this is uh, called Ivan Silkway, and this project has been launched since late 2017, so effectively for five years now. And again, we see an increasing demand towards this um, direction. Um, on the Caspian Sea, one, we have one of the largest, if not largest, um, sea trade ports. Um, and uh, it is in phase two, so it is also expanding and it's going to have more of capacity. It is adjoining a that free economic zone, which we heard the presentation on today. So that's like a very important uh, connection of three uh, major type of roads, like a multimodal connection, if I may uh, put it this way, well, both with highways and uh, railroad and with the sea uh, port. So, and this is regarding the uh, infrastructure on this slide. Uh, I'd like to remind that at the beginning of the presentation, I mentioned that the country's GDP equals to 54 billion USD. And on this slide, you can see that as of July of this year, uh, the country's sovereign reserve was a state oil fund of Azerbaijan equal to 45 billion. So that shows you that we have some significant uh, reserves and the country's economy is uh, quite uh, sustainable. Uh, of course, uh, this still requires and uh, will probably further require the, the, the recent develop, uh, developments and reforms in various areas, and uh, the country is granting them. There's an ongoing process of reforms. We have our uh, taxation system improved with the lesser number of uh, tax uh, checks. We have created a number of one-stop shops for uh, different uh, directions, including uh, in our direction, actually, because as promised, as a single window uh, for export and investment promotion. So, for any matters relating to that, you could reach out to our institution. But apart from that, of course, we have single window entities in the, for instance, in registering the properties in the customs. So uh, that's ongoing. Uh, and uh, once you decide to settle up here with the production, if you decide to do so, the uh, governments ha have some uh, effective mechanisms to further promote export of the produce out of the country with a number of trading houses of the country across various locations that you can see on this slide. And also uh, very important, the creation of the trade representative institution uh, which you see on your right, we have a number of them. These are very crucial in both export and investment promotion. So, uh, we'd be more than glad to provide more information about these both uh, how, uh, trading houses and on the trade representations. Um, on the investment climate, I think it's very important to mention that uh, there is no discrimination between local and foreign investors. That is something to keep in mind. Um, no necessity, no requirement to have a local counterpart. You can have one if you want to, but it's not necessary. Do business on your own. There are no limitations on bringing in the capital or taking the capital out and repatriation of profits on the price transactions and on technology transfers. So you could see that this is very benevolent to the investor and would be Glad if you consider this. Of course, we have a number of bilateral investment and double taxation avoidance treaties with various countries. And uh, we can also provide the list of your requests. Um, I think, uh, given the uh, uh, infrastructure issues that we have uh, mentioned, it would be also very uh, useful to mention the industrial parks, districts, and agro parks, which we have. Uh, in the country, uh, which are uh, very efficient instruments as well. We have a number of them. And as you can see, uh, based upon the statistics, statistics, there is a significant number of export of commodities produced precisely in these uh, parks. I'd also like to draw your attention to 51 agro parks, which provide abundance opportunities in uh, agriculture and uh, relevant uh, areas of uh, food industry. 
So uh, this is something to keep in mind. And when it comes to the incentives that these parks provide that, uh, then I should mention that for the period of 10 years, you're fully exempt from the corporate income tax, from real estate and land taxes. And for the period of 10 years, you're exempt from the paying uh, of VAT on the equipment imported to the country for the production purposes, as well as you are exempt for seven years period from paying custom tariffs, uh, again, on the imported equipment. If for some reason you are unable to be become a resident or you're not willing to become a resident of industrial park or zone, you're free to settle up in any part of the country with the so-called investment promotion document. This investment promotion document is provided with a similar type of incentives. Uh, it is designed for seven years, all of them. And again, here you'll be paying over 50% of the corporate income tax, given the fact that the corporate income tax in Azerbaijan equals to 20%, you'll be paying 10% for the period of seven years. You will again be exempt for that period from paying um, the real estate and uh, uh, land taxes. And for the period of seven years, you'll be exempt from the imported equipment. Again, the equipment imported for the production purposes. Here you can see some of the opportunities that we stretch out. We think we have a lot of potential to work in. But I must tell you, this list is not exclusive. And uh, certainly, we would be more than willing to consider cooperation in other areas of industry or whatsoever. Um, I already briefly mentioned the activities of Astromo. Um, like I said, we uh, promote the uh, uh, country's activities, both in export and investment traction uh, when it comes to non-oil and gas uh, promotion. Um, within the export, we have significant opportunities put into the promotion of the Made in Azerbaijan brand within that brand. Um, the promotion we do a number of events throughout the year to make it more popular. So once you start your produce here, production here in Azerbaijan, um, uh, use this uh, brand for, um, for your purposes. And uh, it, I think it's also very important to mention that uh, we are uh, strongly involved with the policy democracy efforts in most of the directions and also on the investment part we do a lot of aftercare with the local company so if you sell up here as a investor we will be moving to that good system with your current and also effective issues with that in mind i think i will complete my presentation and i uh, really appreciate your attention thank you very much uh, thanks so much, Mr. Zahra, for such an uh, ambitious plan and very comprehensive presentation. Thank you so much. Um, moving now to a different and very important direction in each uh, country's economy, which is SMEs. And as we always say, a big business always starts small. Of course, the best to talk to us about the future of SMEs in Azerbaijan is the advisor to the chairman of Small and Medium Business Development Agency, Mr. Zahur Gardashov. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, dear participants, dear guests. Uh, this is one more good opportunity for us uh, to provide uh, very briefly information about our agency. Uh, our agency is quite uh, young and now uh, we are established by the present presidential decree in uh, 2019. Um, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see. Uh, yes, uh, we, we established it in 2019, and uh, the uh, main uh, goals uh, for establishing of uh, the agency, uh, first of all, was, of course, um, uh, to create the institution uh, who will um, support um, according to our legislation, micro, small and medium enterprises. Uh, as a legal entity, we are under the Ministry of Economy uh, and um, our goals providing uh, SMEs with a number of services, as well as ensuring coordination and regulation of services uh, provided by the 
different government bodies to SMEs. Uh, the agency uh, has uh, seven members uh, in the supervisor council. Uh, supervisor council consists of uh, uh, deputy ministers uh, from different uh, government bodies, including the Minister of Finance, uh, Minister of Labor and Social Protection, uh, Minister of Agriculture, uh, uh, state agents of citizen service of Azerbaijan, and so on. Uh, as we see from the presentation, uh, the main goals of the country for the next five or ten years is to boosting non-oil sector. Uh, and uh, in our uh, strategic um, roadmaps, roadmaps uh, till uh, 2030, we have a concrete goals uh, regarding uh, uh, increasing of non-oil economy and uh, non-oil uh, exports. And today, the 95 percent of uh, or the working companies is consists from the small, uh, micro, small and medium enterprises. And uh, uh, we think that uh, exactly the micro and small businesses will play important roles uh, in increasing of non-oil economy. If uh, we can look just to some numbers, uh, uh, the, according to our legislation, you, you know, we uh, uh, have these three entities uh, according to the size and employee uh, quantity, micro, small, and medium. And today, the uh, almost 70% uh, of trade and uh, more than 50% of construction. Uh, and uh, up to 90% uh, of agriculture companies uh, consist exactly from uh, micro, small, and medium enterprises. Uh, some figures regarding uh, the evaluation and about improving business environment in Azerbaijan, according to your business climate survey 2021, uh, Kobe has been recognized among the best top five reformers authorities. Uh, we have uh, also another improvements in these uh, business ratings, uh, uh, including a tax system improvement, a customs, establishing those uh, centers, uh, and so on. One of the main uh, activities of uh, SME agency is to establishing um, one-stop shops and uh, non-stop shops both for uh, SMEs, uh, uh, including uh, the via the phys physical in, uh, infrastructure and online. Uh, in that regard, uh, where uh, building and opening the so-called uh, SME houses in different regions and in the capital city of Baku, which uh, according to one uh, one-stop shop provide uh, services to the business from different government bodies. Uh, Right now, there's two SME house is um, under operation. And uh, last year, for example, Hachmaz SME houses delivered to the business uh, about 50,000 uh, unique services. Uh, by the end of this year, where we will open the biggest one, the Baku uh, SME house. Uh, Will will which play also the central role uh, 
for different uh, neighbors uh, districts uh, besides um, SME houses they develop uh, com uh, complete almost all uh, existing services from different government bodies we also have uh, 44 four uh, so-called SME friends in the regions this SME friends um, offices uh, represent our interest in the region and uh, uh, support the regional SMEs by pro uh, by providing direct uh, contacts and uh, um, delivering different services from the uh, center. Knowledge uh, and training is the important things and development of SMEs, you know, and it's one of the another our main activities. Uh, and the biggest program in this field is a COBIM center, so called SME development centers. Uh, we launched these centers in corporate, uh, cooperation with uh, private consulting and training companies. And uh, today, um, we have in act uh, 22 COBIM centers, so-called COBIM centers, as many development centers in the uh, country regions. Uh, until now, the launch is just one year ago, until now uh, more than 23,000 as we uh, benefit, uh, benefited by the trainings and by the consulting services provided by the uh, co-beams. Uh, we have also in our basket another different interesting supporting tools. Uh, for example, uh, uh, so-called startup certificate uh, grants startups uh, by the tax exemption for three years. Uh, and we granted especially uh, to the um, startups which um, uh, provide uh, innovative IT and uh, different uh, uh, services or products, uh, which consist more than 50% of know-how. Uh, another useful tool which has a big demand from the SMA is uh, this is the mass or market access programs. According to that program, we rent the spaces in different big markets and provide the spaces to the uh, SMEs for free. We have a public council space which plays uh, the important roles in uh, establishing connection between business and government bodies. Uh, and uh, almost each month uh, we collect these uh, councils uh, and uh, the specific uh, sectors, specific issues and uh, arrange the meetings with the responsible persons, uh, especially with the minister, which is uh, responsible for that sector. Uh, last month, for example, uh, for the last uh, three meetings was in the sectors uh, of ICT, uh, healthcare, education, uh, and we arranged uh, meetings of the uh, uh, business uh, accordingly with the ministers, uh, Minister of Education, Minister of Healthcare, and Minister of uh, Communication. Um, uh, businessmen uh, during the meetings delivering their questions, uh, the pattern, the table, the existing problems in the sectors, and um, according to result, uh, were prepared a special document, special proposal to the government uh, for uh, some reforms uh, uh, in that in sector. Uh, for 
as maybe no where strongly working on uh, SMA development fund, which will uh, give us another very uh, good and very useful uh, supporting tools. Uh, we will be able uh, to provide uh, direct grants and uh, low rate, uh, low interest rate uh, uh, credits uh, to the SME. Uh, I, I hope um, this fund will start uh, its activity by end of this year. Uh, and the SME Development Agency work uh, their PPP development centers. PPP development centers uh, collect the projects from the uh, entrepreneurs, uh, which um, relate to PPP, especially to PPP sector, and uh, make coordination between different state bodies and the companies uh, for launching this kind of projects. Here are some uh, good examples um, of support uh, COBIA for establishing different businesses and um, networks in the regions. Uh, we have another responsibility right now, you know, uh, two years ago, we uh, liberated uh, areas in Nagorno-Karabakh and uh, the government, uh, according government acts, COBIA have to uh, collect the application from the business and from the entrepreneurs, uh, also from the investors, local and foreign as well, uh, the projects, uh, uh, the business plans, uh, which they would like realize in these liberated uh, regions in Karabakh regions. And till today, um, we have received around 1,300 applications from different business. Uh, some businesses already started, some project already started. Uh, another one under negotiations. Uh, uh, but uh, we, we think uh, we, we approved more than half of that projects, more than half of that application, and uh, in, in near future, all of them will start activities in liberated lands. Uh, we have prepared different uh, reports, different uh, market research, uh, and uh, disseminate uh, this material, this information amongst that. Uh, uh, among the entrepreneurs, and this one is or another activities uh, where create uh, we create different uh, regional uh, uh, investment um, catalogs of um, of the country uh, and provide it to potential uh, investors. Uh, we have also uh, active um, in international cooperation and our cooperation geography is widening day by day. Uh, we are signing as uh, bilateral as well as uh, multilateral agreements uh, with different uh, uh, agencies, including SBE uh, support agencies. Uh, from another countries and as well as uh, we have in portfolio already more than 50 agreements with different international uh, institutions. Uh, thank you for attention. Uh, this was a brief information about uh, SMB Agency of Azerbaijan. Uh, here you can find our contacts and if uh, uh, I forgot to deliver something or if you will uh, have a questions addressed to us, we will be glad to answer your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for the rich presentation and the clear vision. And as you mentioned, of course, uh, SMEs uh, are a fundamental pillar for any economy all over the world. Uh, thank you.
let's move together to a new sector, the agriculture sector, and one of the most successful agencies that works on the involvement and use of loans for state support in this sector. We are having with us today Mr. Farid Amirov, head of the project and programs department of the Agency for Agro-Credits and Development under the Ministry of Agriculture in Azerbaijan. Mr. Farid, could you please tell us more about the current programs and activities of the foundation and how it works to develop the country's economy? Thank you. Um, thank you for the warm introduction remarks uh, on the agency that I'm working for. As you already introduced, I'm uh, Farid Amirov. I'm working for the agency for the agri and Development, which is operating under the Ministry of Agriculture. So I'll be presenting the functionality, the main role of the ACIA briefly, it's abbreviation of the agency is called ACIA. The functionality, the role of ACIA uh, in the business sector and the agricultural sector. Uh, let me first share this, uh, share my presentation. Okay. okay. Hope it's obvious and you can clearly see my presentation. Yes, I can see. So as, all, as I already mentioned, the agency is operating under the Minister of Agriculture. Great, let's say the agency is a financial organization uh, which enables an opportunity for the farmers to get an easy access to finance or facilitates to the, the farmers to get an easy access to finance. Uh, we as an agency have uh, four main directions like issues of the soft or the preferential agricultural loans uh, issues of uh, discounts for the equipment and the breeding animals, uh, pro provision of the state guarantee, provision of the direct subsidies. Uh, agency actually provides uh, subsidies in six uh, main directions. Now, with the, with the state budget, with the uh, financial support, uh, which is allocated by the state's uh, support, and uh, moreover, the implementation and the coordination of the agriculture projects and the programs uh, is one of the main uh, role mandate of the agency as well. And the final investment promotion is the uh, operational area of the agency. So let us go a bit uh, deeper through the uh, soft loans or the preferential loans, how the agency provides discounts, how the agency provides to the preferential loans to the farmers. Uh, let's first start uh, with the discounts for the agricultural machinery. Here in these types of discounts, uh, the agency provides 40% of the customs value uh, uh, of the total investment amount for the agricultural machinery if it's imported. Uh, so we are, as an agency provides 40% of the customs value, but if it's domestically produced, we provide 40% uh, of the value which is determined as a result of the assessment by the appraiser. Uh, the 20% is an uh, initial payment, uh, which uh, should be at least 20% of the total uh, value of the agricultural machinery, uh, which should definitely be provided by the farmer. The rest of the 40% uh, of the total amount, uh, we actually uh, put it in the uh, credit, we consider it uh, as a credit, the amount again allocated with the resource of the uh, agency, which is allocated by the state budget. As here, um, in this case, the interest rate, all the interest payment is paid by the agency. Only the principal amount uh, for the credit is paid by the farmer, but the, all the interest rate, interest rate amount is paid by the uh, agency. Uh, the, the other uh, other support tool or the support mechanism which is provided by the agency is the discount for the breeding animals. For the agricultural machinery, we will provide 40% of discount, but for the breeding animals, uh, we provide 60%. Again, if the uh, animal or breeding animals are imported from abroad, we are providing 60% of the custom value if it's domestically produced. Uh, we take the assessment of the uh, appraiser uh, and, again, and still provide the 60% for the domestic breeding animal as well. Uh, for the agriculture machinery, it was 20% for the initial payment. 
requirement here if we have 25 percent initial payment uh, the farmer should pay at least 25 percent in order to receive a breeding animal and the remaining 15 percent uh, is allocated uh, is allocated by the uh, agency as a here in the breeding animals we are not providing an interest rate payment uh, because we have already covered even uh, one and a half uh, more than one and a half half of the total uh, uh, the value of the uh, animals. Uh, another uh, financial tool that the agency use are the micro loans, uh, small loans, medium loans, and the large loans. Uh, first, uh, let me introduce the micro loans. Uh, the main uh, characterize or the main function uh, of the micro loan, uh, the banks and the agency provide the loan to the farmers without any collateral requirement. So here uh, we just uh, provide the state guarantee to the banks and, uh, and request and ask the banks uh, not to require additional collateral from the farmers. And the loan maximum uh, loan amount is up to 15,000 uh, manat. Uh, the areas uh, which are covered, which might be covered with the support of financial macro loans are farming, poultry, gardening, family farming, and animal health. Uh, here you see the, uh, the amount of loan for the small uh, uh, loans, for the medium sized loan, for the large loans. Actually, uh, the maximum amount for the small loan is up to 30,000 manat, uh, for the medium sized loan, 100,000 manat. Uh, for the large loan, it's up to 200,000 manat. And the term of the loans, it's up to three years, up to five years, and up to six years. They're also providing discount period for the small, medium, and large loan, uh, large loans uh, accordingly. Like, up to 18 months, up to 24, and up to 36 months. Uh, I would like to share some statistical data, some statistical information with you on the discounts and the treaties, which are, uh, have already been provided by agency during the uh, first part of 2022. Uh, 11.6 million manat was given to the 631 individuals and the legal entities. 67 applications for breeding animals. Uh, in total, 2.7 million manat in sessions were allocated. Uh, these are the information which are uh, which is valid for the first quarter of the 2022. Uh, the next um, support tool, uh, as I introduced in my first presentation, is the direct subsidies in the, the six directions. In the six directions, IKEA provides direct subsidies such as crop subsidy, which uh, is 100 uh, manat was determined uh, for the each house cup received through that artificial insemination or the embryo transfer. And the bee subsidy, the farmers uh, engaging in the agriculture or the beekeeping were given uh, 10 manat per year. Uh, cocoon subsidy, farmers get a subsidy of six manat per kilogram of the wet cocoon delivered to the supplier. And additionally, we have crop subsidy, plant subsidies, seed subsidies, and there are also uh, the direct subsidies, which is uh, directly given to the farmers. And moreover, I will uh, I will I will provide you the information about the recent uh, reforms, the latest reforms. Uh, sure, I, I cannot uh, cover the older all the reforms because of the lack of time i don't want to take too much of your time just two or three reforms i, I will be introduced to you uh, one of them is dealing with the crop subsidy in order to provide the self-sufficiency for the food weight uh, there is a presidential decree on the uh, on the crop subsidy actually uh, the, the the provision of the crop subsidy will be applied for a period of five years uh, starting from uh, 2023 to the food wheat producers. And uh, the, the first requirement is of, uh, which we are requiring from the farmers is the application of the modern irrigation systems. It should definitely be applied to the uh, agriculture area and the food wheat should be delivered to the, uh, to, to the state agency and the floor mills. Afterwards, the, uh, the 
food with producers uh will be provided with a crop subsidy before currently they are provided with a uh, cultivation uh, subsidy but after the 2023 they will also be provided with a crop subsidy as well uh, together with the cultivation uh, subsidy another presidential decree it's about the uh, it's about the terms of loans uh, about the duration uh, period uh, for the purpose of building new gardens, uh, for the purpose of uh, uh, the, the new uh, launch of the new infrastructure, new uh, gardens, the term of concessional loans actually up to 200,000 mana uh, has been extended to six years. Before it was five years, and after the decree, it was extended to six years, and the concession per period for the loans has been extended to 36 months. Uh, however, before it was only 24 months. And the maximum loan interest rate for all types of loans to agricultural cooperatives is set at uh, 5%, despite uh, it's ranging from 7 to 12% uh, for the other types of the individuals or the legal entities. Uh, this uh, reform uh, uh, aiming at the incentivizing the farmers uh, or encouraging the farmer to be actively operating as a cooperative uh, for. So there is a fixed amount, fixed interest rate for the agro cooperatives, and it's only 5%, uh, which is provided by the Agri Treaty and Development Agency. Another recent reform uh, which contributes the uh, provision of the subsidy or the which provides additional income to the farmers. Uh, you know, uh, after the uh, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, the uh, small land parcels have been determined and distributed among the uh, even more than four hundred thousand farmers. And uh, the ownership rights, the, the some farmers could get an ownership rights, but according to the uh, presidential decree dated October 7, 2021, of, uh, ownership rights over shared lands uh, are ensured at the expense of the state funds based on the application of the uh, undocumented farmers. Here, the registration of the real estate in the state uh, register will be provided, and the submission of the extract from the state register plans and dimensions of the land plot will going to be provided. Uh, the main goal or the purpose of this uh, decree is to ensure the farmers uh, benefiting from the crop subsidy. You know, for the uh, for the uh, for obtaining the uh, subsidy from the agency, uh, one of the main requirements is uh, to uh, to having an ownership rights on the lands. Uh, there are some lands that the farmers uh, they are not possessing ownership rights after this reform they'll be provided with the ownership lands and their land will be uh, registered in the uh, registry of the uh, relevant state agency or the service another uh, reform is uh, formal uh, formalization of the subsidy funds play a, uh, plays a guarantee role for the farmers agricultural loans or debts. so if a farmer is a, a subsidy receiver so uh, the once they apply to the banks or the any corresponding credit organization, they can uh, they can show the subsidy uh, fund document as a collateral as a guarantee. Uh, after uh, during the under uh, writing process, credit loan officer uh, will take this uh, document as a guarantee in order to provide uh, the loan to the borrower to the farmers. So we have uh, e-agro system. I also wanted to just briefly introduce electronic agricultural information system. It's actually a single system that includes the main operating principles for the Ministry of Agriculture of Azerbaijan. And it includes a wide range of opportunities for integration with, international, uh, with internal and external systems. And it creates a foundation for the establishment of an agricultural chain. Uh, starting from the 2020, all agricultural subsidies are paid to the farmer car on the basis of an application through. So the farmers just uh, submit their documents 
to the agency through the e access e agro system. Uh, they have their own window. They uh, they have uh, their own username and the password. The, there is no need any physical uh, uh, physical attendance uh, coming to the times or to any other organizations related to the subsidy. Now uh, they got, they can just apply now for the subsidy through e agro system after. Uh, 2020, uh, this provision of the agricultural subsidies are paid to the farmer cars uh, of the uh, uh, of the farmers. Uh, besides this, there are some other advantages uh, as well. Like uh, farmers are able to purchase agrochemical products through uh, e agro system, and they are also able to uh, to receive agricultural services through uh, the agro systems uh, and they have uh, the opportunity to send applications uh, 24 hours a day through the electronic cabinets and this photo worker of charge. Uh, there is no any state duty in order to apply for the subsidy. And uh, it's also a good system <clears throat> for the ministry as well that the ministry can develop a forecast uh, coordination and they can also control the capabilities of the farmers and they can uh, develop a uh, quarterly, semi-annual or the annual report according to the operational areas of the farmers. Uh, then uh, another, uh, the electronic services included in eAgro, uh, applying concessions to agriculture equipment, newly purchased, leased, uh, or the sold by Dakia, as well as accepting applications for six types of subsidies. The registration of private farm for determining the breeding direction, ac acceptance of the application and documents related to the change of driver license to drive a tractor or other mechanical vehicles, acceptance of applications and documents for state registration of tractors as well as mechanical vehicles used in the forestry and agriculture, and also the tech for the technical inspection of the tractors. Uh, they can, or the system can also accept uh, the applications by the farmers. The another electronic platform is tap agro .us. Tap is literally translated as find, find agro .us. It's a platform where all the suppliers and the purchasers of the agricultural, agrochemical products, fertilizers, pesticides, insecticides, and so on. So there's a quite liberal uh, business environment whichever product or whatever supplier or the purchaser that the farmer wanted to choose, they can choose through the system and it's totally electronic. And uh, besides this, uh, as I have already mentioned, we are also uh, implementing a projects and the programs in the field of agriculture. We have a strong uh, relationship uh, with the a financial institution with some international organizations like FAO, like World Bank Group, uh, like International Fund Agricultural Development, TICA, COICA, JICA, or USID. And uh, currently we are implementing more than 20 uh, agriculture projects. Nine, uh, sorry, eight of them, just one has recently uh, concluded, completed. Um, the eight projects are uh, carried out within the framework of the FAO Azerbaijan Partnership Program. Uh, this is a program from the government side, the Ministry of Agriculture and agro Trade and Development Agency is a partner. From the uh, executor side, the FAO is our partner. So together we are um, uh, implementing eight projects, which aims at uh, developing the agricultural sector in the livestock, in the uh, plant breeding sector, in access to finance, uh, and other sectors as well. So this from my side, in case you have any questions, please do not be Thank you very much. Thank you so much for such uh, impressive uh, efforts uh, that are really reflecting on the country's economy. And that was actually the best way to end our webinar with. And on behalf of the Islamic Chamber of Commerce, Industry and Agriculture, I would like to thank all of our speakers for such informative and knowledge sharing discussions and presentations in today's Country Focus webinar. And for the clear visions and strategies 
towards the growth of Azerbaijan's investment climate and economy. And we are looking forward to ICCIA Sustainable Agriculture Forum that will be held in Azerbaijan in partnership with ASK and Kubia as a serious step to achieve sustainability and economic integration in OIC countries. Uh, many thanks to all of you and looking forward to more countries to focus on in the upcoming webinars. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.